Look at this, we found another time capsule. And it has some kind of like embroidered patch or something in there. Okay, so we've been on an adventure today and we haven't found anything well, at all now. I found a bit of copper pipe. Oh, okay, <laughs> a bit of copper pipe. But um, we have found this old telegraph pole with these ceramic insulators on. And they're really big, they're massive. They're amazing. So we're gonna see if we can get some of them off because they're just beautiful. There's one up here that looks like it'd be easiest contender. Oh, it's turning! Oh, it's really... <gasps> yeah! I think they're screwed on. They're screwed on. Wow! Wow! Oh, that's so cool! Wow, that's actually... Oh, look, has something on it. It's got a name on it. What does it have on it? Made in England. Wow! Okay, well, let's... I'm going to try and get some more. Look, there's loads of them. Some of them are chipped, but we're going to take the ones that are... We're going to take the ones that are in good condition. Oh. <laughs> oh, if you could just stand on the other end over there. I'm gonna try and get this one off. Okay, basically it's not gonna happen with, with one hand. It's not gonna come off as easy as the other one. Yeah, it came off, screw it the normal way. That's really stuck. I can't get it off. Oh well. Try another one. Try another one. Ah! Oh. It moved a bit. I heard a click. I wonder if you put um, gloves on, it would help. Spit on your hands. I've seen men do that before they do a job like this. They spit on their hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, it helps. It helps. More groovy. See, men don't spit on their hands for nothing. Oh, come on, Alex, you can do it. That's a shame. Try those ones. Is it moving? Yes. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Cool. Got some wire, wire still around it. We can cut that off. That's great, and it's got the date on. It's got a little beetle in there. Oh. To find him a new home. <laughs> Hello. Hello! Okay, so here we are back at our local dump yep. and we're going to have a look around. It's quite a big dump but um, a lot of it's modern and the yeah. bit that's old, uh, not a lot of it's been exposed. No. Um, but we're going to have another look and see what we can find. Fingers crossed we find something. <laughs> okay, I'm still waiting for mum. But while I was waiting, I saw a few things. Here, I found a stopple bopper. And then here, I thought this was a marble, but it's like elastic bands. Ball of like elastic. How strange. Maybe it was a golf ball. I know golf balls are like this inside. I think golf balls are like this inside. And then I've seen something down here as well, which is unusual. I left it in situ. This thing. It's funny shit. Oh my gosh. It's a little face. Oh, that is wonderful. Oh wow, look at him. 
little chubby face with a heart. <laughs> it's unusual. I've never found um, a little face like with that kind of glaze on it before. Oh, that's cool. Can't tell if it's a man or woman. And a stopple bopper. I'm not sure if I'll take in a random elastic band ball, but. <laughs> Oh, mum's here, but I found a pipe ball and it has nothing on it, but that's all right. We can do something with it. Oh, look, a bead. I think that's a bead. Can you see it? I don't think you can. It's very small, tiny little pink bead there. Oh, wonderful. I can't get it so tiny. Oh, that's pretty. That is very pretty. Little tiny pink bead. I think it's a bead. Yeah, it's a bead. A bead in a pipe bowl. Very welcome finds. Okay, so there's something hiding here under this piece of plastic. And it's a bottle stopper. That's a really nice one. It's so clean and shiny. We have had some heavy rain, so I think anything lying on the surface has been cleaned. I've just found the tiniest little jar. Look at that. It's like a full size jam jar in miniature. <laughs> I'm going to keep it. It's a bottle just sticking out here. I wasn't going to do any digging, but I might as well. You never know. <laughs> I can't get it off. I'm going to have to get my scrapey thing out. I can see it's almost whole so far, but I'm not going to hold out much hope. It's probably broken just on the top. Oh my goodness, it's not. Oh, wonderful. Oh, beautiful. Look at it. And there would have been a ceramic swing top on the top there. But look at this. Wonderful. And what it says. Bottled by. I think that's Sanderson. Sanderson. Edinburgh. Beautiful. Be taking that home. I'm not sure, but I think this is a bead. Oh yes it is. It's a little green bead. Oh, that's so cool. There's a few bottles here, including this very common bottle. We find it very often. It's a um, California Fig Syrup Co. San Francisco. These Californian fig syrups are very popular, especially um, over the turn of the century. I've just found the most beautiful stopper. It was just sitting right here. Wow, look at that. Cut glass. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. See, it's ground, a ground in stopper. That's beautiful. Sauce bottle here. Coffee and chicory, that's a very common one. And up here, I, I saw another one, another stopper. There. Ta-da! And this one's just absolutely beautiful. I love that. It's very, um, it's very deco kind of looking. Beautiful. That's a beautiful find. Go on our stopper collection. Lovely little bottle here. But I'm trying my best not to take them. Because we have so many. <laughs> An interesting square shaped bottle down here though. <laughs> I'll try and reach it without falling down the bank. There we go, got it. Oh, it's not broken. There's nothing on it, but it's not broken. And I really, really like that square shape. Oh, I really like that. I know I said I wouldn't take any more small bottles, but I'm taking that because you can't stop me. <laughs> see something really really tiny actually just here can you see that it looks like the lip of the tiniest bottle you've ever seen let's have a look oh my 
goodness. That is the teeniest, tiniest little vial ever. It's got stuff in it. Wow. What on earth would have been in that? Probably something very poisonous. Whoa. You could make that into a, oh. Oh, you could make that into a little necklace. Put a little silver cap on it. Oh, yes, definitely. Love that, that's a good find. Here's a find I think you'll all recognize. It's a cod marble. And another marble of sorts. It's one of those little clay marbles that we still aren't 100% what they are. Little bottle here. It's just plain. Looks like it's got something... It's had something white in it. Hmm, should I take it? Oh, yes, I can't resist it. Oh, this is exciting. I've just found one of these little jars and I've recently been reading about them, which is really interesting. Oh, it's complete. So in one of the books bought for us um, from our Amazon wish list, I was reading that these smaller um, stoneware jars had essences in. So this jar probably had some kind of essence in. Who knows what? But um, yeah, that's strange. I just I was just reading about these. Oh, I've just spotted a tiny bead down here. Look at that. It looks black, like black glass. And then here is a piece, a tiny fragment of old newspaper. It looks absolutely knackered though. It's been in a fire, obviously. The wind's getting it. What is that? Pleasure in introduce introduce pleasure in introducing is what I can read. Oh, and it looks like a car a car. Oh cool. British pistol Renko Limited Coventry. Oh, I'm gonna try and I'm not sure where to put this to protect it because it's very delicate. I think I'll keep that. But anyway, I'm going to pick up this little bead here. I think it's a bead anyway. Yes! Tiny little black glass bead. And this. Look at that. <laughs> Not sure what that would have been actually. So mum actually already found this in a previous video and one of our viewers pointed out it was a spittoon. And a spittoon is a receptacle made for spitting into, especially by users of chewing and dipping tobacco, which sounds pretty gross. Anyway, I've just seen something down here actually, out the corner of my eye. What is this under here? Oh, oh, how cute. Oh, it's a swan. It's a bisque swan, but it's broken. Aw, what a shame. Interesting shape bit of brass or copper or something here. Not sure what it is. Oh, I think it's some sort of button. Or off the end of something, it reminds me of something. Look, there's like a little hoop. Can you see a little hoop? Hmm, I have no idea. Well, I have a small idea, but I'll keep it and the little swan head. <laughs> That's a huge bone. Gymongous. Oh, I'm just spotted <laughs> another mini whiskey bottle. Oh, I'm gonna have to take it. We've got a mini whiskey bottle collection now. So. This is going to have to go in it. <laughs> What's this here? Oh, I think <laughs> that is a little 
person. Very broken. <laughs> and this looks like um, another bottle stop. Yes, it is. There's nothing on it, but I still love them. Another stopple bopper. Second glass one of the day. A pipe bowl. Oh, it's got a heart on it. <laughs> Might keep that to make something with. Vulcanite rubber stopper here. Just in the lip. I'm going to take the stopper because well, I don't know really. <laughs> we just kind of started collecting them. Oh, there's like a random collection of bottles down here. The jar. That tiny one's knackered. Sauce bottle. Oh, it's a poison bottle, but it's melted, <laughs> squished. Oh, not in good condition. It says on there, I don't know if you can see it, poisonous. Not to be taken. Oh, I don't think I'll take it then, in that case. <laughs> it is a bit damaged. There is a little burst lip bottle here though. And they are very cute. Oh, what's that? It's up there. Oh! Oh, that's lovely. Look at the colour of that. Oh, it's gorgeous. It, it's a poison. I think it says poisonous not to be taken. Look, it's a burst lip. And it's the most gorgeous colour. I love it. Shame about the chip out of the lip though. I'm gonna take that bon anyway, I think, because that's a really pretty colour. Okay, I've just pulled a pipe bowl out. Has it got anything on it? Nope. It's absolutely clean of anything but it can be made into something. Oh wow, look at this. Ah, oh, it's like a toy wheel, but it's big. Oh, that's interesting. Keeping that. Um, oh, look at that. Ink. Oh, wonderful, yes. Undamaged burst lip ink, and it's so ditzy. Oh, I think I've hit a good patch here. There's some more bottles down there. Oh, and a plate. I've had that bottle before. And this one is tablespoons. Trusty tablespoons bottle, but it's got a chip out of the lip. Actually, we've never found a full one of these, a whole one. It's a very common bottle, but for some reason, we just can't find a whole one. Actually, it's not chipped on top. It's actually been melted. <laughs> it's got a melty top. Oh, I really want to find a whole one of these, so it's tempting to take this one. Let's see what else there is anyway. Oh, that's a very dark bottle. I think that says um, Schweppes. And a plain, oh no, it's not a plain jar. Oh, it's got loads of writing on it. It's a screw top. Let's read it. I'm struggling to look, see it through the... Horlix. Oh, it's a Horlix bottle. Oh, we have Horlix in the kitchen, actually. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Oh no. I'm not supposed to be taking bottles and I'm finding all these interesting bottles. Ah. <laughs> I might put them to the side and then have a think. Massive old pop bottle. And yeah, this is what I was gonna about to pick up to take home. This old plate, vintage plate. Cause we can decorate these. We can um, turn them into spongeware dishes. So I've been looking forward to finding another one of these. I think this is a little bottle stopper. Yes, a little metal one. 
and it's got cork still on it. Cool. This is such a tiny, cute little bottle. Look at that. I don't think it's got anything on it. But I love it. Oh, look at this. Ah, look. It's a pounce pot. So you would have, this would have come in a set and after you wrote something with ink, you'd put your pounce on it, shake your pounce over it to set the ink to dry it. So that's cool and it's undamaged so I'll take that. It's a collection of electrical things down here. Lamp fittings. And here's a really old lock. Now that's definitely out of some kind of, it's at least Victorian, old lock. All vintage light fittings and things. Oh, there's the switch. Bakelite. Keeps for doors. Oh, you, oh my gosh, that is so strange. From my bedroom door, I need a new one of these. <laughs> and there's loads of them here. Oh my goodness. I think I'm, a, I'm gonna take one. I'm gonna put one of these on my bedroom door. That's so weird. What's this? A pipe bowl. I think it's, I don't think it's got anything on it actually. This is a caster. You can see the ceramic wheel and that's where the leg of some furniture would have gone into it. <laughs> so random. Why all these fittings? Oh my goodness! Oh. <gasps> I find this actually so cool. It has its key. Oh my goodness. What on earth? The key is still in there. The old Victorian key is still in the lock. Oh, there's no way we could get that out, is there? Oh, what if we could? No, surely this is knackered by now. Oh no, I'm tempted to take it. Oh, I'll show mum and see what she thinks. So I found a whole jam jar and it's not damaged so I'm going to take it. I can see a skull down here but I don't know what it's off. Hmm, it's hard to say but I think it might be, I don't know, I don't really know. Look! I found a whole pile of them! They're, I think they're um, the pulleys out of sash windows. It's a shame they would have been ripped out of the out of the old Victorian houses and the new modern plastic windows would have replaced them. Which I think is really shame. A real shame because I like the old Victorian windows. But there's just, yeah, loads of them here. Oh, that's got something on it. Something black current. Something. Oh, there's loads of things down here. Oh, what's that? Oh my gosh, that looks like an ancient gold coin. <gasps> it's a button. Oh, that's really interesting, actually. That's really weird. It's got something on it. It's got Lyle Scott. Oh, that must be, must be some kind of brand. Oh, that's exciting. We can look that up. There's something really interesting here, actually. There's so much stuff, I think. Someone's cleaned out an old shed and dumped their stuff here. Button, another button. 
I keep finding buttons. But anyway, in this jar, there is like, there's a marble and an old um, poppy for Remembrance Day. A Remembrance Day poppy. This is like a time capsule. Maxwell House. Oh, this is exciting. Let's have a look. It's an orange cat eye marble. And oh, look, it's one of the old um, Poppy Day Remembrance Poppies. That's so sad. And um, I think an old bit of light bulb and things. Oh, and a tiny little toy soldier, plastic. I don't want to take that little poppy and the marble. Look at this. We found another time capsule and it has some kind of like embroidered patch or something in there. Okay, so we've decided to take this jar home and open it there because there looks like there's some kind of embroidered patch in there and some buttons and things. So we're going to take this one home and open it there. So exciting. So stay to the end of the video and we'll open this jar and see what's in it. Okay, so it looks like the last find of the day is this little tiny bead. Because it's getting dark, we're going to have to go back home. once again a very strange mixture oh yeah definitely this time and um these two things are really <laughs> <laughs> which are just yeah. they were random so before we went to the dump we went on a little adventure close to home and we found these old and they are humongous i mean they're giant my this was mine and this is mum's this one's bigger yeah and this one's got um, a date on it, which is 1937, made, made in, in England. England. And there's a, we couldn't make it out at first, but it looks like the logo is a hand holding an insulator and there's like sparks coming out the top of it. Yeah. So, yeah, um, and the same here. Except this is 1936, Six. Six, I think. But we can't find, we haven't found anything similar no. to these on the internet, so. If anyone has any idea, um, any information on these, yeah. we'd be grateful. So They'll probably be going in our garden somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> They're beautiful though, they aren't are. they? They are. I mean, yeah. they would have been handmade, you know? I know. Um, and uh, we've got brass. So we, we love polishing our brass yeah. <laughs> and copper things because they just look so nice and shiny don't we they? put them in an ultrasonic cleaner which loosens all the dirt sort of in a gentle way and then we give them a scrub and they come up so lovely so um here's a cog this is um a picture hanger yes not something off a window we think this is the end of a webbing belt a hinge other thing off a window, don't know. This is the fitting of a gas light. So they probably, you know, obviously change the gas lights to electricity. A, uh, a lovely piece of um, just copper pipe, which I can't wait to make something out of. very shiny. Actually, we're, we're collecting the, these things because we want to make things. Yeah, I think this would actually make a really cool bracelet, wouldn't it? Yeah, part you of could, a bracelet Yeah, you something. could make that into a bracelet. I love that old yeah. hinge. Um, so yeah, these are all like perfect crafting material right here. And then we have Alex's lock. I was absolutely <laughs> just so excited to find this. It's amazing. And we did actually get the key out. So we put it in the ultrasonic cleaner with a bit of citric acid and left it overnight. And by morning, the key worked its way out. Well, I worked it out of the lock. Um, but unfortunately, the lock itself is knackered. Um, yeah. So a well, bit obviously fell out. It's... It's iron and it's it's yeah. rusted quite a bit. So a bit fell out of it, and you can hear like 
it rattling around inside. Yeah. It's just knackered. Yeah, so it won't ever be used. Um, but the key is pretty cool, I think. It is. And then we've got a keep. <laughs> yeah, amazingly, a keep. So my bedroom door, the keep is actually broken. So this will actually be used on my bedroom door. I'll replace it. <laughs> so that's quite cool. <laughs> and it has this beautiful brass like trim. Yeah, I think it? this was um, sort of inlaid into the wall and that would be the only bit showing. Oh, I see. It's, so it would be like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, that will be put to use, definitely, <laughs> which I think is brilliant. Yeah, it's like daddy, mummy and baby. Yeah. <laughs> this one is absolutely gorgeous. Look at the size of it. It's so, so teeny. It's cute, isn't it? It's got 30 on the bottom. Yeah, I think this was an essence pot and these probably had jams um, or marmalades in them. And talking about jars, I also found oh my goodness. a tinsy little glass jar. So these two kind of um, go together. Yes, we've found like vintage glass jars like this before, haven't we? We find yeah, them often, yeah. but we've never found a mini one. It's so a cute. A teeny one. Um, and then we've got some more bottles. Um, this really cool poison bottle here. It does actually say, but it's quite hard to read. It is very faint. It says poisonous, not to be taken, and it's just a beautiful colour. We've never found one like this before. No, not that shape. So that's unusual, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, we have this mineral water bottle. And it says Sanderson Edinburgh. And that, yeah, would have been a mineral water bottle. Yeah, it would have been a swing top as well, you can see on there, but that's Probably well rusted off. First half of the 20th century. Um, and then our favourite bottles. Oh, I love this one. Yeah. Look at this oh. ink. Yeah, we both love this one. It's fantastic, I love it. We've never found a burst lip ink in this style before. No, so this with this a... sort of bulbous bit on the Yeah, neck. definitely, it's beautiful. And, and then we have the teeniest <gasps> bottle we have ever found. Look at I it. I know. It is a bottle because it's got a lip. It must have had some kind of medicine. I think it might have had been a perfume sample. Oh, you yes. You know, you get them in those oh, little boxes. Yes. Oh, perfume. that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Perfume sample. And then on the, the theme of perfume, <laughs> we've got this bottle here, um, which um, turned out to be a perfume bottle. Or something similar because it's from the brand Yardley. Mum's got some information on Yardley. I couldn't find out exactly what this bottle held, but I think it might have been lavender smelling salts. They did have square bottles that had the smelling salts in, but this one's a bit different, so I'm not quite sure. But anyway, um, a little bit about Yardley. And Yardley is said to have been founded in 1770 by the father of William Cleaver in the city of London. Cleaver married Hermia, the daughter of William Yardley, who acted as a guarantor for a loan that Cleaver had taken out. When William Cleaver was unable to repay the loan, William Yardley had to foot the bill and so became owner of the soap and perfumer business. It was handed down through various sides of the family, becoming Yardley and Statham, and then Yardley and Co Limited. In 1910, they opened a shop at 8 New Bond Street in London, and the company has held several royal warrants. And it is still going today, of course. So. Yeah, I think we've actually got some Yardley perfume upstairs, yeah, to be honest. Yeah. I do. You, you've got some rose yeah, perfume. Yeah, I've got some rose really perfume. Nice, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's... A beautiful little bottle um, and then we've got some stoppers down here and one of them is a ground stopper this beautiful um, cut glass um, very art deco looking isn't it which is probably out of a perfume bottle. yeah but unfortunately it doesn't fit <laughs> this, this is a ground glass bottle you can see the kind of rough matte finish inside there but yeah it doesn't quite fit it's slightly too big sadly but that's a beautiful stopper. It's gorgeous. Isn't it? Um, and then sauce bottle stoppers. Probably out of sauce bottles. They could have been out <laughs> of other kinds of bottles, but um, mostly sauce. And some more stoppers here. We've got a vulcanite, which is just plain, and this. It's still got the cork on, which is quite strange. It would have had something screwed on the top there. Yeah. Maybe a knob of some sort, something or, decorative. Or maybe like a pointy, like a funnel kind of thing. 
Yeah, yeah, the pouring, something yeah. like that. Um, and then this, which um, Mum found out quite a while ago what these were, because we have found a few. Yeah, it's from a novelty writing set, which would have had a pounce pot, which this is, um, and an inkwell, and something to hold the pens. Um, we've seen examples in the shape of old cars and things like that. So. Yeah, yeah, so this is, it's probably quite cheap, uh, came... More of an ornament, really, than yeah, a yeah. practical Pro thing. It's very unlikely to be used by no. by then, um, by the turn of the century. Yeah. Um, and then what else have we got? Oh, we got our crockery and pottery pieces. And Alex found the king and then the queen. And these are our current queen's parents. That's King George V and Queen Elizabeth. Was made for their coronation. Yeah, yeah, you can see it there. Oh, yeah. Coronation. Coronation. <laughs> um, more pottery pieces. We've got a beautiful bisque swan. Part of a beautiful bisque swan. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, this cheeky little face. <laughs> yeah, look. It's a bit creepy, to be honest. It's kind of peeping out from... Yeah, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> then this strange face. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Is this is that like a riding hat or something? Or yeah, it looks like it. Not sure if it's a man or a woman. No, it's probably someone like John Peel or I don't know. Um, and then this piece of pottery here, which has got a little birdie on. I think that's some sort of um, majolica or majolica pottery. They're very brittle. Um, I think that's what it is. Not hundred percent sure. Okay, and moving on to our little plate here in the middle. And this this uh, saucer will actually be decorated with spongeware like our jars. And on it is a few interesting bits and bobs. So, we have this marble that Alex found. Yeah, this came out of one of the jars that I emptied. Orangey colour. Um, a cod marble. Um, a sort of ceramic marbly thing. And we actually recently found out what these Take were. We found proof of these, didn't we? Yeah, um, we found where garden rubbish had been dumped and there were literally hundreds of these on the ground. Yeah. Although they, they were all very matte on the surface and that's... A, yeah, slightly shiny. Um, that's slightly shiny. So. But we'll show you a clip of that now. Yeah. We've made a fabulous discovery down here. Yeah, <laughs> look at this. Look at all these balls, these clay balls. <laughs> look, there's thousands of them. We find these regularly in dumps and we didn't know what they are. And we think this is where people have been dumping their garden rubbish for many, many years. And look, they are identical to the little balls that we find on the dump. Now, I'm pretty sure that these are out of plant, plant pots. pots. Yeah. They're for drainage in plant pots and such. So, well, this isn't kind that of cool? It because the soil dumped here. Like yeah, behind us. There. This looks like soil out of someone's plant pot. And amongst it are the little balls. So, I think we finally got to the bottom of that mystery. And then we have a horse or cow front tooth. Yeah, the roots disappeared. Um, and then we have a little plastic soldier. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like he's throwing a grenade. Yeah, yeah. I should put a bunch of flowers in his hand. Yeah. Um, a little plastic flag, probably 1960s. Um, we have got a plastic green bead. Oh. Um, this thing. Looks like a head of a hat pin or something. Yeah. And we've got a glass bead here with a bit of wire, kind of rusted into it. Um, a flat black bead here, which is unusual. And this pink bead is not a bead at all. It's a pinhead. Yeah, Mum pointed out that pointed out it was actually a pinhead. <laughs> it's glass, uh, glass pinhead. Yeah, it's glass pinhead. Okay, and the last thing before we move on to our time capsule jar here is buttons. We've got three buttons here in the middle. Yeah, and this is very unusual button. For one thing, it's stuck. <laughs> For one thing, it's massive. Yeah. I and um, it's this funny shape. I thought it was maybe like a cuff link, but it's too, it's too, too big, big for to a cuff, be cuff link. Yeah. 
So I've not seen anything like that before, but I like it. This one does has, have writing on the back, but we can't read it. It's very, very faint. It just says something limited. Yeah, you can only just see limited on there, unfortunately. And then this one here is quite interesting. It has Lyle and Scott on it and a date 1874. That's pretty cool. I thought it was a big juicy gold coin when I first when I first spotted it. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't it look like a coin? We wish. <laughs> a gold sovereign. I almost had a heart attack. So I've got a little bit of information about um, Lyle and Scott and they were founded in the small town of Hoyke in the Scottish borders in 1874 by William Lyle and Walter Scott. The brand grew rapidly in the 1960s when its golf collection was worn by the great golfers of the time, including Gary Player, Greg Norman and Tony Jacklin. So apparently William Lyle's favourite motto was, good work makes more work. And that's how they've prospered, probably, by making good work. It's a beautiful quality button. It is. Maybe it came off some golf clothing. Yeah, because we have found golf tees and I found the inside of a golf ball, remember? Golf is remember very, there? very popular, especially here in Scotland. Yeah. Um, every town has a golf course. They, it does, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, that being the final find. Um, no. Well, it's not, <laughs> it's not the, the final find, but this. The exciting thing. Now, as you can see, in this jar we found, there's lots of boring, like, wall ties and things, but there seems to be... A piece of cloth with something on it. Yeah, there's some kind of patch in there. It looks like it's something military. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do is open it for you right now and try and find out some more information about that, what that is. Yeah, so... So Mum's going to tip out the contents into this bowl we have here. Can't wait. And let's see what's in. Oh, might be gold coins hidden in gold. here. Oh, <laughs> I doubt it. Oh, it smells. Does it? Oh, it smells funny. Yeah. What's it smell of? I'm going to give it a sniff. I don't know. Let me this give it a what sniff. I want to see. Oh, no, it's all dirty. Oh, oh, no, it's horrible. Oh, it, stinks. it stinks. <laughs> wait, some more things in there. It smells like some strange, greasy, oily stuff. Um, there's a button in there, but I can't get it out. I don't want to put my hand in there at this moment. No, yeah, let's see, there's a little oh, like, look at this. button in there. Wow, this is what we wanted to see. Wow, oh We're my goodness. We're going to have to give it a wash, I think. Yeah. It's in such good condition. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. It's embroidered. AR. AR and the star and these look like lightning or electricity or something. It's definitely something military, isn't it? It's like, looks a, like something it. that would be yeah. sewed onto your uniform. Radar or something, not sure. Let's see what else there is. Um, yeah, I don't want to touch it, I'm going to get something. Oh wait, I can poke it with this. Okay. <laughs> Oh, these things are off. I mean, off. this stuff is sort of wet, so how did this survive? Oh, look, 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 is that the uh, oh, bullet oh, casing? Oh, 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 It's <laughs> bullet casing, what is it, a 303? It says something yeah. on the bottom there. I don't want to touch it. I'm going to have to look it up. It definitely says something on the bottom there. That's a bit of pencil. And there's buttons. And buttons. Looks like that's about it. Mud locking on our table. <laughs> Some glue. Airfix. It sounds hollow. Oh, so, it's got 1978 on there. Oh, oh that's, that's interesting. This must come from the 70s. Yeah, so it's at least 1978. That's interesting. So, Looks well... Like yeah. There seems to be nothing much nothing of, interest of interest in here, apart from the bullet casing and, and this. the badge. I wonder if these are related. Perhaps they are. We'll have to give them a wash up and do a bit of research and then we'll come we'll back. We'll show you at the end of the video if we find anything out about uh, this. Alright, so we've given these a bit of a clean up. Alex has gone to town on this bullet shell. Oh yeah, I gave um, it a good old polish, that's for sure. It looks amazing, it looks brand new. Probably better than you. Yeah. Anyway, so that is a Norma point two four three Winchester, and it's a popular sporting rifle cartridge for medium and small game, and it was introduced in 1955, which again would um, go with 
you know, the things that we found. Yeah. Um, and then we've got this, our amazing patch here. And I have done some research, and also thanks to the people on Instagram who also gave um, me some very good clues as to where to look. So thank you very much for that. Um, but I got in touch with um, a military museum. And so a massive thank you to Ken Sutton, who is curator for the Royal Navy Communications Branch Museum and Library at HMS Collingwood in Fareham, who very kindly supplied us with the following information. This badge denotes the man wearing it was a Royal Navy radio electrician's mate, Air, first class, and was used between 1948 and 1955. However, this title was changed to Radio Electric Mechanic Air, first class, from 1955 onwards. The badge would have been worn on the right arm of the man's working dress, commonly referred to as number eights. The air denotes that he worked on the electrical systems of various aircraft. So that's so, very specific, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so probably <laughs> on an aircraft carrier, I'd imagine. That's, that's so cool. So, mystery solved, and um, once again, thank you to Ken, and we'll give you... Um, a link to this really incredibly interesting museum. They have a wonderful website. Um, so we'll, yeah, we'll put that link on for you to go and have a look. Yeah, so it'll be in the description below. But um, yeah, this is an amazing find because how often or how likely is it to find surviving cloth in a rubbish dump? I know, we've never found anything that's this well preserved on a rubbish dump before no. made of cloth. It's incredible because rubbish dumps are so acidic and things like this would just deteriorate really, really quickly. Um, yeah, that would be gone now. But yeah, it's amazingly well preserved. It's got a bit of staining from the um, nails and things that were in the jar with it. Yeah, and I think that smell that was in the jar was um, the glue. Yeah, the glue, kind so, of. So yeah, it was a bit whiffy. Yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't very nice. But yeah, that's that's it. That's it for this week. Yeah, and we just like to say... A humongous thank you to everyone who's contributed to our channel in any way. We really, really appreciate it. And we'll see you again next Sunday. Bye! Bye.